What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so I wanna be a little bit dangerous here. I wanna try something that we haven't really done before. I wanna try Ultimatum. And the reason why is because I think this is one of those stories from Marvel Comics, those of you guys who don't know, this is one of those stories where you either love it or you hate it. There's no real middle ground when it comes to Ultimatum. It's, there's, there's, well, we're going to try part one here, but there's, there's no such thing as like, I kind of liked it or I liked parts of it. There are people who are just like, I hated it, like, or I loved it. Like that's, that's, that's really about it. But Ultimatum is one of these events that really comes out of the Ultimate Universe. Now the Ultimate Universe in the beginning was awesome. As the years went on, it began to sort of stagnate and it seemed like one of those things where it was just just an imprint that was there and Marvel didn't really know what to do with it. And there were some great stories like Hickman's Ultimates was amazing. Uh, instead of the Avengers, you have the Ultimates. And so really the, the way this worked out to provide a little bit of backstory here, the way this worked out is the Ultimate Universe was the answer to the question, what would happen if superheroes basically came into existence right now? And the Ultimate Universe proved to be exceedingly popular. It was all really kicked off with Spider-Man, with uh, X-Men, with Fantastic Four. That's really where it all kind of, you know, began to blow up, but it was a lot more grounded and a lot more, you know, tangible and, and a lot more reasonable. For example, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is largely based off the Ultimate Universe. So if you really want to read comics that tie into the MCU that, that the MCU is predicated on, it's really Ultimates. That's really about it. But for example, in the in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we're going to see the X-Men somewhere along the line. The reality is that how we would see the X-Men come into existence would largely be based on the Ultimate Universe. And the reason why is because doing anything else would be wildly convoluted for the average viewer. In the Ultimate Universe, the way this worked out is Nick Fury was the first super soldier. And then after Nick Fury was Captain America. And then Captain America had basically uh, was well, was believed to have been lost. Uh, Abraham Erskine died and the super soldier serum was believed to have died with him. But in response to Captain America, all these different countries around the world began initiating their own super soldier programs. Canada was trying to create a super soldier and they had taken James Hallett. They took Logan, who actually I believe was freed or fought alongside Nick Fury in the early days. But the idea was that in trying to turn him into a super soldier, they discovered the mutant gene and that if it was activated, people would gain powers. And so much like the Terrigen Mist in the main Marvel Universe, a kind of substance was synthesized and dispersed throughout the planet. And the result was that mutants started waking up. That's how we got like Xavier and Magneto and all those different guys. They weren't born with a mutant gene that activated due to stress or due to like puberty or anything like that. It was activated in the same way the Inhumans were basically activated by the Terrigen Mist. That's the most logical way to bring them in. But the other half of this is that there were a lot of things that were going on. We'll explain this as we go through it. But initially what this does is it just kind of picks up with a fantastic form. This is one of the big differences here is Reed and Susan aren't immediately married. Instead, there were some differences between the fantastic Fantastic Four in the Ultimate Universe and the Fantastic Four in the main Marvel Universe. Most notably, we picked up with Reed Richards as a kid. That really didn't happen in the, the main Marvel Universe. Instead, Reed Richards was already grown up by the time the Fantastic Four started. Because the Ultimate Universe had the benefit of the main Marvel Universe's entire publication history, starting with Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, they could kind of go back and say, well, if we could do things differently, how would we do them? Well, we'll start with Reed Richards as a kid and explain why he's so smart. But the idea was that as time progressed, of course, the relationship began to form. And that was really it. It was the idea that all all roads lead to Rome. This is all going to turn into something akin to the main Marvel universe as we expect to see it. It's just a little bit different in terms of how they get there. Like Reed Richards, Susan Storm, Ben Grimm, and Johnny Storm do form the Fantastic Four, but Reed and Susan get married just by a different set of circumstances. And that's what's happening here. It's actually Reed getting ready to pop the question. The other half of this is you deal with Tony Stark and, and Captain America to a degree. They're not exceedingly important here. There's not that much of a difference personality wise in terms of how you see them in the main Marvel universe and how you see them in the Ultimate Universe. But somebody that I do want to pick up on here is a character by the name of Barbara Norris. She goes by the name of Valkyrie. Now Valkyrie with regards to the, the Ultimate Universe is different in a lot of ways than like the main Marvel Universe, right? Like Valkyrie in the main Marvel Universe was originally just a chick who was there. But as Norse mythology really began to take hold under Jack Kirby and various writers, especially those who came later on down the line, like Walt Simonson and expanded on a lot of what was happening, Valkyrie became a character, or at least she was introduced as a character and would go on to become a character where she was the leader of the Valkyrie. Valkyries, this group of women that would basically rescue the honored dead who died in battle and escort them to Valhalla in Norse mythology. In the Ultimate Universe, because it's designed to be more realistic, that's not the case. Barbara Norris in the Ultimate Universe was just a chick who was obsessed with superheroes, and that was it. She wanted to be one. She was essentially a groupie. What ended up happening is she had ran into Loki, and Loki had essentially given her, given her the power of a goddess so long as she would ally herself with Loki. That ultimately turncoated. Uh, she ended up joining the Ultimates and basically became the girlfriend of Thor. The way she's depicted here is designed to be kind of like a female 
female counterpart to Thor, but it's pretty hardcore in terms of how she functions and, and the role that she plays. Something else that I also want you guys to notice is what goes on really with like Kitty Pride and Gwen Stacy, Peter Parker, as well as Mary Jane Watson. The Ultimate Universe is different in a lot of ways when it comes to the character of Peter. Well, I guess maybe different isn't really the right word so much as more modern, I guess is probably the best way to do it. The chronology of Peter still remains the same regarding his dating life in the sense that he's dated Gwen Stacy, he's dated Mary Jane Watson. At the moment, at least I, I don't remember exactly, I think at the time this is going on, he's dating Mary Jane, but he actually ends up going on to date Kitty Pride. But again, this is a point where like, they pretty much know his identity. I mean, that's kind of the thing with Peter. It's for the most part, that's one of the big differences. In the main Marvel Universe, Peter Parker's identity was hush-hush. Like he kept it quiet from pretty much everyone. But in this universe, people do know who his identity. Now, it's not a general public known thing, but that circle is larger in the Ultimate Universe than it is in the main Marvel Universe. So again, these are small little tidbits, small little things here and there. Uh, the other half of this is that in the middle of this whole situation where the various characters are, are kind of going along doing their own thing, the city, you know, the city of New York is suddenly met by nothing but like massive storms, and then the whole city's flooded. It's literally flooded entirely with water, and it leads to people beginning to ask questions. Now, much like we would expect from the main Marvel Universe, the heroes leap into action as heroes do, and basically go about saving various people. But notice this, because they're a little more tangible and they're a little more grounded, a lot of the emphasis is really put on themselves more so than anybody else. They do save other people, but it's really kind of like, okay, we got to get out of this. And like tons of people die in the process. Like at this point, there's really no saving these millions of people who have basically died. When the Incredible Hulk pops up, you know, when Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk and goes about doing his whole thing. When you have like Thor who's responding to various situations, when like Archangel responds to these things, it's really kind of how we would expect, gathering their bearings and seeing what's going on. Now, of course, Susan Storm does what she can in creating a force field that sort of blocks off a huge part of this ocean. And it's kind of cool. But the problem with this is that it's believed that Johnny Storm has basically been lost here in the flooding of New York City. And so, of course, in an effort to figure out what's going on, Reed Richards basically takes to, you know, takes to the to the waters and tries to find Johnny Storm. And this brings in Namor the Submariner. Now, Namor the Submariner, I would say in, in the Ultimate Universe, uh, his origin, or at least how he's brought in, is vastly different from the main Marvel Universe, right? In the main Marvel Universe, Namor McKenzie is the result of, you know, a, a human and, a, and, and an Atlantean basically touching naughty bits. So that's really about it. I mean, there's a little more to it than that, but that's the long and short of it. And this, in the Ultimate Universe, I think it's actually cooler. It's basically that, like, the, the, you know, Mary Storm discovers Atlantis and then goes to the Fantastic Four to help her, you know, help her explore it. They end up discovering the sarcophagus of, uh, of Namor the Submariner, and when they open it up, they release him out onto the world. And so that's when, like, he first pops up. Whereas in the main Marvel Universe, he's been in Atlantis for a long time. He fought alongside Captain America and the invaders. He's been part of the superhero community for a while. And so it works because again, where Name of the Submariner was the first mutant hybrid, more or less, in the Ultimate Universe, it's designed to kind of set things back and, and correct things a little bit. So again, as the ruler of the seas, the immediate response of, of, of really of, of Reed Richards due to like the aggression that Namor has in terms of like, do not come to my ocean, you know, do not poison, you know, poison where I live, is that Reed believes that Namor is the one that set all this off. And that's one of the big similarities is that Name of the Submariner, much like Aquaman who came after him, much like these sea dwelling kings in the various comic book uh, comic book mythos, the idea is that if there's like a massive ocean-wide event, then it had to have been Namor who allowed it to happen. Now, of course, Reed Richards is able to subdue Namor, uh, ultimately ends up knocking him out. But then Reed asked the question, if Namor was not the person who was responsible for this, then who was? Now, the initial indication of everybody who was reading this at the time was, well, of course it was Doctor Doom. Why wouldn't it be Doctor Doom? He's always plotting world domination, and this is something Doctor Doom would do. You know, because you remember, when it comes to this thing, while you do have various characters who are out there, that are indicative of like the main Marvel universe that draw on the main Marvel universe, they're not usually on the same scale. And because Doctor Doom, I would argue, is probably one of the most credible threats in Marvel Comics in the Ultimate Universe, that's where a lot of people's thoughts resided. And the way that Jeff Loeb and company nip this in the bud is they pick up in Latveria. And what ends up happening here is like Doctor Doom ends up realizing that like, one, the place is freezing, two, various people are frozen over, and three, when he gets out into Latveria, the whole city, the whole town is frozen over. The whole place has been completely frozen solid. And so what we end up doing here is picking up with the X-Men themselves and Charles Xavier. And the reason for this is because Xavier knows everything that's going on. And so where you have like Wolverine who responds, Cyclops, so on and so forth, Xavier actually sends out a telepathic SOS to all the Ultimates, to the very, you know, to the Ultimates of Fantastic Four, to more or less the entire superhero community and Marvel in the Ultimate Universe and says, I know who did this and I know why. You have to go and find him and you have to stop him. And that's when we end up finding out that not only does Magneto have Thor's hammer, but Magneto is the one who set all this in motion. He's the one that has basically instigated 
investigated all this. Now, I'm waiting into the, uh, really waiting until the end to reveal this. The reason why is because Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, the kids of Magneto, were killed in Ultimates 3. There was the Ultron Rebellion, which I think led to the death of Scarlet Witch, and then Quicksilver, I believe, was killed by Hawkeye, but the idea is that, like, his kids have, have basically died, and that set Magneto on a warpath. Now, this was Marvel's way of trying to blend, like, the traditional Magneto mythos with, like, the Ultimate Universe. And the reason why is because in, in the main Marvel Universe, Magneto's mythos has always been that, like, he wants to basically allow mutants to overcome humanity. And this has been done in, like, a wide array of different ways, right? Like, I mean, there was Asteroid M and Avalon. When the X-Men invaded Magneto's ship, tried to stop him, and then the humans launched nukes at Magneto, and he issued a blanket EMP across the world and shut everything down. Like, there's been a multitude of instances where he's tried to, like, liberate, quote-unquote, mutant kind, where he's, like, tried to lead rebellions against the entirety of humanity, where he's had mutants, like, leave the planet Earth for safety away from humans. And this, Magneto's a little bit different here, but this is kind of grabbing those elements and rolling them in and bringing them over and saying, even if it's by a different means, even if it's because of, like, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, and it's, like, uh, basically something as, as baseline as vengeance, the idea is that, like, Magneto's trying to attack the world. Like, he's trying to conquer the world, more or less. So it still falls into the same vein, but it also still works. But what this means is that Magneto's the one that's instigated all of this, and it's basically Magneto against the entirety of the Marvel Universe. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and let me know down in the comments section, because again, this is really more of a test. So let me know down in the comments section if you guys want to see, uh, actually, if you guys want to see more of this, just drop likes, I guess is the best way to do it. Uh, leave some likes to let me know, because usually more people will drop a like than they will will leave comments, because most people don't really care enough to put comments. Uh, so just drop a like if you really want to see more of this. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I will catch you all later. Peace.